What's up guys? Welcome back to welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, we are back with the 640i. Now I thought about doing this video in two parts where, well technically three parts, pulling out the engine for one. The second one would be fully trying to restore the new engine before putting it in and trying to make it look absolutely perfect, detail the engine bay. And then the third video is getting the car started and getting the engine installed. But I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and have a jam-packed video and pretty much do everything that I just said for the second and third video in one video and today's video is sponsored by simply carbon fiber you guys can check out this amazing wallet i've been using for so 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 long i literally that's my primary wallet i used to have a much bigger wallet but then once i went to the simply carbon fiber wallet it looks so sleek honestly everything i need is in this wallet i don't have to carry extra stuff it holds my cash and honestly it's not the only product that i carry with me i also carry their simply carbon fiber watch um honestly most times when i'm going out with friends and stuff like that um my apple watch i use it primarily for just work reasons but the simply carbon fiber watch paired with this wallet just looks so 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 good especially driving around my dream car which is the audi r8 hopefully one day i can get the audi r8 but in the meantime what i can get is the simply carbon fiber wallet and it's just so easy to flip out but yeah guys if you guys want to cop this wallet if you guys want anything from simply carbon fiber make sure you check out that first link down below but without further ado let's get right back into the video now this is going to be a lot of work but i am super stoked to get this project started mainly because guys again we've never had this 640i running and uh once it starts running i think it's gonna be one of the coolest cars i've ever owned just because of how much technology comes in a car like this for a 2012. I think for 2012, this is older than my 335 IS, which is kind of crazy. And that was an E chassis. This is an F chassis. And this just has so much technology, so much cool things. I just think once it's done, we're going to definitely enjoy it for a little bit. As you guys know from the last video, we ended up pulling the motor from this car. We have it sitting right over there, the engine and transmission right over there. Um, and then you guys know that we also ended up getting the wrong motor. There's like four different or five different kinds of N55s. And I finally picked up this one right here from Specialized German. And uh, I'm not gonna lie guys, this one honestly looks brand spanking new. I believe this one has a few extra thousand miles over the last one, but this one honestly guys has every single thing. They covered up every single port. Like this this engine, I'm telling you guys, I honestly think at one point was replaced on the other car just because like how perfect it is. You cannot clean an engine to make it look that good without literally painting over it. Cause I see a lot of people, you can actually detail it, but this section right here, you cannot really detail it that well. You would have to spray paint it. And uh, like I said, like this honestly looks like a brand new motor. And this one also comes with a warranty, which I'm super stoked about. Now some things I didn't notice, um, I think the oil filter housing gasket is leaking a little bit because I did see a little bit of oil down here. Um, so definitely needs to be replaced the oil filter housing gasket. So if you guys look over here, we have an OEM BMW oil pan gasket. We have OEM BMW oil pan gasket bolts. OEM BMW oil filter housing gaskets, both of them right there. So that's the part numbers for everything. Now this probably OEM for everything here costs a little over $300. Um, but I mean, hey guys, we have a near mint condition motor. And by doing all this maintenance, we're not gonna have any leaks and it's gonna look so, so, so good. Um, but the primary goal again is to just transfer everything to the new motor um, using uh, my bare tools and uh, the man, the myth, the legend right over here, <laughs> Arlon. Like I said, guys, check out this engine block. This thing looks so, so, so good. We have all the spark plugs in it, all the fuel injectors, um, ports covered up. So this thing is in way better condition than the last engine we got. So again, everything happens for a reason. Uh, maybe that's the reason why uh, the first engine was the wrong engine because this one, they pulled it out right then and there for me. And this one just looks so, so, so good. Literally no leaks other than again, that uh, oil filter housing gasket, which we ended up picking up two of them for this one and that one. I actually don't think that this engine has the same oil cool in the same location. Um, so we're probably not gonna use that. And then obviously we're gonna be doing this gasket as well. Honestly, this gasket looks fairly new, but just because it is such a pain to do, we're just gonna go ahead and get it done just because the engine's out of the car. Alright guys, so now that we have the engine sitting on the engine stand, we have the other one sitting on the tire, let's go ahead and transfer everything from this engine to this engine, but at the same time, get everything cleaned up because this one's mint and we want everything to look mint.
guys, so this is the pure stage two turbo outside the car right now. I went ahead and transferred the gaskets over to our stock turbo. Um, actually, some of you guys have already been hitting me up for the turbo for this car, the pure stage two turbo. I might be holding off to this. I don't really know the exact plans I'm gonna be doing for this car, um, but I'm gonna be holding on to this. I just wanna test out this motor and everything with the stock turbo. And again, honestly, guys, for you guys who don't know the plan of the channel for this year, the goal is ultimately is to get an R8. And this is one of those projects on the channel that I really wanted to experience and rebuild, but obviously it's mainly just to flip for this channel. You guys know we got this car for $12,000. If we actually sell these pure stage two turbos for upwards of maybe even $2,000, we've got the car for $10,000, clean title, with only 78,000 miles. If we put the motor in it, the, the, the stock turbo and everything else, we'll be in the car less than $14,000. And uh, we have a perfectly running car that's worth around $23,000. This is definitely well worth the money, definitely well worth the flip. This is gonna be helping us get towards the R-rate dream by the end of this year. But I mean, but I mean, hey guys, we do have the Super on the channel, which I do plan on doing a lot of fun things to that car. Again, I don't wanna disclose anything just yet because I don't wanna make promises, I don't actually fulfill them or anything like that. But I just wanna put it out there and just be transparent with you guys. I don't wanna put pure stage two turbos on a car like this, mainly because um, the ideal buyer for a car like this, low mileage, six years, is not going to be a teenager. Most likely, somebody's going to buy this. Going to be an older guy that wants something that's more luxurious and something that's way more stock. So that's why we're putting the stock downpipe on this car, putting the stock turbo on this car. Now we are going to leave some tasteful modifications that you can't really see and we can still pass smog with. For example, it has an M6 muffler, which we're going to have to keep on the car. We do have the stock diverter valve, but I'm actually going to replace it with this one, the fab bits right here, just because you you'll be able to hear the turbo a little bit more, but also be smog compliant, which is uh, it's a win-win. So are we enjoying the car and finding a new owner? At least it's something that's more enjoyable and uh, something like that. It's just definitely worth putting back in because it doesn't affect smog and it won't affect the next owner that's gonna be buying it. But at the same time, we will enjoy it. So that's definitely something we'll be transferring over. Like I said, we're keeping the, the, the stock M6 muffler on this car because it looks good and it sounds good. As far as I know, that's what the previous owner told me. I have no idea. Anyway, I'm not gonna go ahead and try to explain myself too heavily. You guys know the goal for 2022 is to get an R8. So we'll do whatever it takes to try to achieve that dream. End of the day, some of you guys are not gonna be happy with with that but hey this is my life it's my dreams i'm trying to chase after my dreams and i'll do whatever it takes and if that means selling the 640i in literally a week or two after doing a flip i mean hey guys everyone's trying to do the flips out there i'm just i'm just a guy like you guys and i'm trying to make them flips as well to get to my dream car so uh for those of you guys who respect it um smash the like button for those of you guys who want to just hate me in the comments do your thing i just don't care thanks for viewing the video though <laughs> Guys, the pure stage twos are no joke. At first, I was like, oh my God, this is this has a BMW turbo. This has BMW turbo. But if you guys look in here, look how small that turbine is. And look how massive that one is. That was obviously the pure stage two turbo. That is absolutely insane. Um, honestly, guys, I was, it's very tempting to put that on, but I just, it, it, it's so sick because honestly, at the same time, guys, no one will ever really know, like for smog purposes, no one will know that there is a pure stage two turbo in the car, especially if you put the maps back to stock. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people go with pure stage twos because you can't really tell that it's literally aftermarket whatsoever. The housing and everything looks exactly identical. It's just the inside of it is completely like dremel down or like i don't even know what you guys call it, but drilled out to fit a bigger turbo within the same cast so that's kind of crazy <laughs> and a few days later guys we finally have the turbo on the car the engine's pretty much ready to go i haven't really started piecing this thing together because i'm waiting my boy Erlan to get here to help us get everything sorted this is pretty much my first motor swap on any car honestly so i really want Erlan to be here so we don't mess up anything because the last thing i want to do is go ahead and install everything and i forgot to put something in while the motor needed to be out and then we have to restart the entire job so we are almost done stripping the original motor once we get everything off the original motor we're going to go ahead and remove the transmission transfer over to our new motor that's why this video has been taking so 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 long to drop i really want to try to get everything done in this one video shout out to our lawn you got me a little breakfast sandwich this thing's actually not bad
guys, on top of the fact of putting brand new vacuum lines, brand new gaskets, also on the bottom for the sensor, putting a brand new gasket for the sensor, the, the, the oil level sensor, and they're also gonna be putting obviously new gaskets for all the drain plugs and everything. We're literally gonna be resurfacing this entire engine, making it as perfect as we possibly can. So we just had a little another Asada break. The, yeah, this video is broken down within two weeks. So technically a week and a half. So we got Asada fries three times, which is the three days we worked on this car. So don't think that we just eat Asada fries every single day. Just every time we work on cars, we like Asada fries. And he is. <laughs> so we're actually working on this motor. We had everything assembled on here and it's looking really, really, really good. Um, as in this point, we're honestly ready to put the transmission and engine back in the car. Um, it does need some fluids. We are missing a hose line. So I ordered a hose line from BMW. I did get transmission fluids. I'm probably going to pick it up from BMW later today as well. So we're going to try to get this thing to turn over today. That is the goal. So without further ado. Officially back as you guys saw the engine is looking pretty good, bro. This is looking bro I, I appreciate you. It's looking really good. You, they already know how much work a lot been putting into this from the you guys can see this entire video um, Obviously, this is all in one video. So um, if you guys haven't noticed our was pretty much doing like 85% of the work <laughs> I was doing 15% and I was passing the tools and stuff. So, you know, that was pretty cool. Um <laughs> Anywho, things we ended up needing to replace. Unfortunately, we did break our boost solenoid when just getting the engine in there. It just accidentally snapped off this piece. Um, that's not really a big deal. Boost solenoids are pretty cheap. We got this one. This is used. It's probably the only part we ended up picking up used because BMW doesn't have it. Um, this hose right over here is a BMW hose. We're going to go pick it up right now. As you can see, it's brand new. Um, this is one of those hoses that always end up breaking every time we pull it out. Um, fluids, guys. Fluids, fluids, fluids. This is $50 on like my discount because I have a discount with them. It was $75 for one quart so we're putting some bmw fluids in there guys in terms of oil they only sell quart by quart so i ended up just picking up two um five gallons from walmart um oof. Well, one gallon, five quart bottles. We're gonna use seven quarts to fill this bad boy up. And we have some extra fluids just in case, but um, yeah, we're treating this car really, really, really good. You guys saw I pretty much replaced every single gasket. We wanna get this thing to turn over. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and slap in all these fluids, transmission fluids, uh, engine oil fluid. It's not gonna have AC right now. We'll do AC recharge later, uh, but at least everything should be running and driving, hopefully, hopefully pretty soon. So we have new oil in the motor. We have pretty much mostly everything connected on here. I mean, in terms of the cool, oh, we need to put some coolant in this as well. We're not gonna leave it running. Right now, we actually don't even have ignition coils in the car either. We're just gonna start cranking it a few times um, because that's what's recommended, mainly because these engines can actually end up seizing up. So to prevent that seize up, we're gonna go ahead and just give it a few cranks before actually turning it over. And if it cranks and everything sounds good, um, we're gonna go ahead and put in some ignition coils, put in the coolant. Uh, we need to top off the transmission fluid. And guys, I mean, we wanna be able to get this thing to start up by the end of the night i don't think honestly we're gonna put together the whole front end today i might even just do that in the whole another video just because you have so much to reassemble on this car but guys if we can at least get this thing started that is the goal and i'm hoping this is a good motor because bro imagine if this is a bad motor dude <laughs> this this would be a nightmare so yeah guys let's go ahead and connect the battery put a jumper and try to hear if this thing cranks at least damn good with it bro <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start dumping it. <laughs> All right, guys, everything situated. First crank. Oh my god, scary, bro. Ne I've never, ever seen this car turn over. So, uh. Hey! At this point, guys, we have the Delphi ignition coils in there. We have every sensor connected. Moment of truth. 
Will this crank over? Oh, oh. <laughs> I see your hand. Yes, dude. That's a run in the car, guys. What? Bro, shout, shout out to Alon. Honestly, bro, I appreciate you. This is crazy. At this point, guys, we have everything reassembled in terms of the motor. So a few things, obviously, on the front end. When I say a few, I mean pretty much the whole front clip. But in terms of it running, it runs really, really, really well. Thank the Lord. But if you have to, if you're leaving it running for a little bit, um, you start to notice a car bogging like crazy. Um, now there's there is a transmission flash and there is an engine tune on the car. Thankfully, I reached out to the previous owner. He gave me his boot mode license to this car because it has boot mode three on it. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn off the tune and hopefully, hopefully, we can turn it on and it idles perfectly. Otherwise, we, we must have plugged in something wrong <laughs> or something else. We'll figure it out. But mainly, guys, it is running, and that is amazing. All right, guys, just logged into boot mode three. Again, shout out to the previous owner. Let's go ahead and just get this thing back to stock. I just, uh, guys, look at this screen. This thing is massive. Good tank of gas. Everything's looking really good. I'm so happy. Like, this is this is a blessing, guys. Let's just go ahead and try to figure out how to put this back to stock. That's my number one priority because we still have a drive tail malfunction. Maybe we have to clear the lights or something, but it starts bogging after about maybe 20 or 30 seconds of idling. So I'm hoping it's just because of the tune. We need to figure this out. And that's the reason why I put this car 100% back to stock because I don't want to deal with the aftermarket stuff. We can easily diagnose this with the OEM stuff. So we found the transmission section. It has the upgraded eight speed automatic TCU flash. Right here, it says revert back to stock. So Let's go ahead and do the transmission one first. Hopefully it is easy. Let's go ahead, click flash. Hopefully we don't brick the car. <laughs> oh my Lord. God bless. All right guys, now that the transmission is back to stock, let's go ahead, I think it's called OTS Maps. And it does have a stage two custom tune on this thing from Pro Tuning Freak. So that being said, I think that's because of the pure stage two turbos. Um, So obviously, so we can avoid any issues with that. Let's go ahead and go back to the stock. I can hear the transmission constantly trying to get itself out of the neutral position. We're gonna go ahead and put the transmission fluids in tomorrow and actually uh, get the car back into, like engage it back into the driving mode and obviously button up the whole front end. The goal is to obviously have no lights in the dash. Hopefully it's gonna be done in the next video. But as of right now, guys, we're back to the stock tuner, back to the stock transmission flash. So let's go ahead and I guess at this point, give this thing another startup. Fingers crossed guys, it idles fine. Three, two, one. Ooh, okay, okay, all right, okay. So far so good. All right guys, I'll let you know once it starts bogging. I'm actually gonna set it right here until it starts bogging. Whole car is shaking. But actually the idle looks fine, but the car is kind of shaking a bit. At this point, guys, it's idling really, really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and just plug in my scanner, clear the codes, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, guys, everything comes back pretty good. But so far, it is idling really good, and thankfully, I think it's because of the tune. It was shaking a little bit, but right now, it is idling pretty good. There's this weird little sound I'm hearing, though. I'm not really too sure where that's coming from. A little bit of smoke, that's because of a brand new valve cover. Not a big deal. We'll let that run, burn off, all that good stuff. Something, yes, definitely coming from down here. Not too sure what that is exactly. We'll probably figure that out hopefully in the next video guys for now i'm just gonna let it idle a little bit more just so it burns off the rest of that oil just kind of get the engine kind of lubricated let it idle god bless guys the 640i is alive hopefully in the next video guys again we're gonna try to get this thing running and driving on the road fully assembled zero lights on the dash that is the goal that is obviously the goal will that happen I hope. That is actually smoking like crazy. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's okay. Anyways, guys, that is going to have to conclude the video. It is 9 p.m. We started at 8 a.m., so uh, 13 hours of work straight. <laughs> so I'm super happy. This has been great in the Navy. But without further ado, guys, before I actually end this video, I just want to give a huge special shout-out to my boy, Erlon. For those of you guys who are wondering, he wanted to do this engine swap with me really, really, really badly, and I truly appreciate it for actually doing most of the work. So I really appreciate it for not only helping, but wanting to help, and just honestly being such a nice guy. Like, having great friends like that, honestly, is just amazing in life, and I truly appreciate him. And hopefully, you guys are going to be seeing him more and more on the channel. He does have his own channel. I'm going to throw his link down below. So make sure to check him out and encourage him to upload more. But without further ado, guys, I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Remember to smash the like button if you guys want to see the next episode. Running and driving, boys.